Hey, this is Jeremy Bowers over here at Coal Banker. I got Matt Donnelly on the line, and I also have Scott from Viral Marketing. Um, today, I wanted to share some ideas of what Matt Donnelly has done to go from 1.5 million to almost 20 million dollars. And I uh, just wanted to introduce Matt Donnelly, and then Scott from Viral Marketing is going to be involved today too. How's it going, Matt? Doing good, buddy. How you making out? Doing good, man. Doing good. So, um, Matt, what were you doing before you got into real estate? So, before I was into real estate, I had my own landscaping business. Uh, went to college at LaSalle, started it uh, my freshman year. Graduated in four years, but uh, throughout that time, I was able to build up a pretty solid client base. So, I actually, you know, once I graduated, I never even used my degree. I just kept on uh, building up my landscaping uh, business. So, I had about uh, a little over 300 clients. I got to the point where I was just tired of beating up my body. I had people calling out on me all the time. And I was doing real estate now part time for probably about three or four years. And uh, doing it part time, just trying to kind of going through my landscaping clients, you know, a couple of random people here and there. You know, the, the last year I was doing landscaping, I was just managed to make like $30,000 in real estate. Uh, I was getting burned out from the landscaping, so I said, you know, screw it. I'm just going to go full time with the real estate and really, you know, jump in with two feet uh, to try to take it to that next level. I was doing some other things, like I was bartending too, um, and I wasn't getting a lot of business that I felt like I should have been getting because people saw me as a landscaper and a bartender who did uh, real estate, you know, part time on the side. And once I jumped in with two feet and I started doing the uh, the real estate, I started getting that business that I was missing. From you know, the bar I used to bartend at, from my landscaping clients, where I wasn't really getting uh you know I wasn't getting it before I I went in with it full time. So uh, I assume you're happy you got into this gig full time. I'm very happy. I own multiple okay. properties now. Uh, I got a couple cars. I got a nice house. Everything is everything's going great. You know, it has its ups and downs, just like uh, any job does. Um, but you know, you put your time into it, uh, you dedicate yourself to it, it definitely has, a, has a unlimited potential upside. You know, it's not like, hey, if I do the best job ever, I'm going to make 100 grand this year. You know, there's really no limit. You know, not that I'm going to make a million dollars next year, but the, the potential is there. And I'll hit it one day. I assume I'm hoping one day Mickey can work with you, right? Hell yeah, he's going to start cutting lawns first. got to get him that good old-fashioned uh, hard work ethic, but uh, he'll be there eventually. I love it, dude. So what, what happened in your mind, Matt, to go from part-time to full-time? What was the trigger? The trigger was I was like, I made 30 grand without even trying in, in real estate, and I was just like, I was tired of doing the landscaping. You know, it was just, you know, it was, uh, it was monkey work. Anyone could do it. <laughs> so uh, I think the fact that I just, you know, happened to have a, a decent year without really trying, I, I, I saw the potential that was there. So, um I said, screw it. I talked to you. Uh, you and Mike Soroka had your team together, and you were looking for a buyer's agent, and you kind of heard wind that I was thinking about going full-time with it, and we had that conversation, and uh, you, know, you said, hey, if you, if, if, if you jump in with it full-time, two feet, uh, you know, we'd love to have you on the team, and we'll take you to the next level, and uh, that's exactly what happened. So you, went to the, you, know, you, so you jumped on the team, and you did that. Um, you talked a little bit about part-time. And going, uh, getting out of getting out of uh, landscaping, getting into real estate. And mm -hmm. you talked a little bit about part time, right? Right. Now you're talking about getting into full time, right? Yeah. Tell me how how was it when you started off full time? What what did you have to work on? What did you learn? It was tough because it's uh you know you're you're showing up. The main thing is you're showing up every day and and, and you're working. You know we had set hours. We went to be in the office by you know eight thirty nine o'clock in the morning. And we were going to be in the office till five o'clock at night unless we had appointments. So we don't have that original business up front. It, it's a grind to be on the phone all the time and prospecting. Um, but it's kind of the nature of the beast, you know. So the first year was tough because you're doing so much of that and so much of that, um, and you don't have the immediate payoff. But I noticed, you know, six, nine, twelve months later, I got a ton of business from you know all that prospecting that we did uh, in the beginning of the year. So uh, what what do you think of prospecting? Still, um, you know, <laughs> not the biggest fan of it. You know, it, it stinks, but it's a it's a necessary evil in order to get your business to the next level. Now I'm kind of fortunate where a lot of my business does come from. You know, my sphere of influence. I know a lot of people. What I'm good at doing is I'm good at networking. So 
know, I try to focus a lot of my time on, on doing the things that I'm good at, but I still always have to fall back, you know, on prospecting um, just in order to, you know, keep on getting better and getting the business to the next level. Yeah. What are you doing networking-wise? Well, uh, I made a concentrated effort to, um, you know, make friends, make contacts with other, you know, business owners, small business owners. You know, I'm at the an age now, <clears throat> I'm 33, um, but even, you know, 29, 30 years old, I noticed that there was other people my age who were successful um, running businesses, and I just made friends with them and told them, hey, you know, I want to give you business, you know, I want all your business, I want you to send me referrals, I'm going to send you referrals. Um, now, a big part of that is being able to send them referrals, which I did, and then in turn, I was able to get a ton of business from them, and then some of them now are, are, are great friends of mine. So you, would you say you've opened up your mind and looked at it a little bit more strategic than just grinding it out? Absolutely. So, you know, a, a big part of this business is having those strategic partners that you have to align yourself with in the mortgage business, in the title business, um, other real estate professionals, commercial guys, and then, you know, contractors, electricians, uh, you know, the whole game of the people. You know, you, you want to have those strategic partners because th they have businesses. And they need, they always need business. You know, they need business. You need business. They understand that better than anyone else. So if you're able to give them business, and you know, they feel comfortable giving you business, that's going to be uh, it's one of my best sources of of, uh, of income. So Matt, one of the things I want to talk to you about is you talked about a little lead generation, where you got business from, and what your past schedule looked like to now to help some people go from 1.5 to 20 million bucks. What um, what was your schedule like before? You touched upon a little bit before. Can you uh, touch upon what you did well, what some of your challenges was early on with your schedule and, and lead yeah, general? Early on with the schedule, you know, I never had a hard time getting up early and getting to work. It's just something I always did and I was, I was good at. Uh, the hardest part is, you know, is once you get there and you don't have business, uh, you know, how do you stay busy if you don't have business there? And the only way to do that is by grinding. And now there's... There's no magic pill. There's no easy way about it. You, you know, you got to pick up the phone and you got to make phone calls. Um, or you just got to go out and meet people. You know, you don't have to call people for eight hours a day. You can do it for two hours. Uh, go out and you know, network. Go out to lunch. I, I used to, you know, I, I probably went through a point where you know, I was going out to lunch with someone different three or four times a week. You know, just to meet. You know, and I would go out, sit down, we would talk for one to two hours, and uh, you know, I made a good contact that way. So with networking, Matt, it seems like you know, networking has been a big part of your business and you have a large center of influence, right? Mm -hmm. So I always use the example on the networking part. I think you've done a very good job of watching over the years you're doing this. You originally have your friends, picture a tree. you got the trunk and you got some nice big branches. And you got some branches off those branches. You really want to meet your friends' friends and your friends' friends' friends, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. You're always That's trying to... Go to those lunches, right? Yeah. What is that? Then we can meet those friends, 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 is go out to lunch, go out to events, go to house parties. Absolutely. That's the only way you can really meet them, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, you know, it's pretty easy. Your, your friends are a pretty easy source of business to get income from. They don't know how they, don't know how they can give you business a lot of times. So you, you school them. You tell them exactly what it is, you know, how they can get you business. Intr introduce me to your friends, to your family, um, to, you know, anyone who you think that uh, would be a good source of business for me. You know, the big part of too is, you know, when you when I was first in the business, you know, I figured everyone knew that I was a real estate agent. I did let everyone know, but I didn't do a good job of asking for the business. And once I started learning that, okay, I have to I have to ask for the business. So I started asking for business. Um, you know, well, who do you know? I, I want to be the guy that you use. I promise I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to do a great job. If I don't do a good job, you know, whatever. You know, I I, I came up with uh, <clears throat> would be like, you know, I, I validated myself and how hard I was going to work for people. Yep. Right. I always kept on asking for the business, and then eventually you start getting the business. Some people you don't get any business from for it could be two, three years. But the, the fact that like, like you send out your email for the Google Hangout we're doing today, you didn't send out one email. You sent out about fifteen, right? Yep. And so, and so you know, it's just a matter. You got to keep on doing it. Keep on doing it. Keep on asking for the business, and uh, you'll notice uh, notice a decent response. Yeah, it's the compound effect, Matt. You, you, that's how you change your mindset. First, you start with your mindset. The next thing is you change with the compound effect. I know you like to play basketball, right? And if you want to yeah, work absolutely. out, you can't just go play hoops once in a while and be good. you got to grind it out and keep on playing, right? Well, that's why I'm terrible at basketball now. 
<laughs> uh, maybe that's that. Us getting old, brother. I don't know. Yeah, I know. But hey, I mean, even that, that's a source of networking for me. I play in two different, uh, you know, open gyms, basketball leagues throughout the year, and uh, I've been able to get business from both of them. Absolutely, man. The more you put yourself out there, the more opportunities you have of getting business, and business from their friends, too. It's amazing. Yes, so, absolutely. So I got a quick so you, question. I want to jump in. Uh, Matt, when you're when you're doing this networking, like what's your what's your approach to to not only talking to them but but getting their information so they can stay in touch? What are you doing to you know get that information? So if it's someone's information that that I don't have already, um, then you know more so just say if it's a friend of a friend. If I'm at a networking event, I'm talking to someone directly. You know, I'm going to ask for their information. I'm not going to you know I might give them my business card, but I'm still going to want to take their information. Do you have your business card? What's your cell phone number? Boom, I'm going to save it. All right, I'm going to send you a text message right now so you have my contact info. Um, you know, you get their, ideally you get their cell phone, you get their email address. Uh, and you put it in your database and then, you, you know, obviously uh, you just want to keep on continuing to grow your database as much as possible. Cool. And Matt, there's no special thing that you're asking. It's just the amount of times that you do it, right? Is that fair? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's just, uh, hey, I'm in the business. I'm a real estate agent, and I'm, I'm looking to grow my business, and I'd love to help you out or anyone else you know who's looking to buy or sell a house. What's the worst thing they could say to you, Matt? The worst thing they could say to me is probably no. <laughs> right? Oh, your your jumper's about, terrible. Something about my mom, but... <laughs> <laughs> right? Pretty much No. Or you know, crack a joke about you, make fun of you, but that's about the worst thing that can happen, right? Yeah, exactly. And you know, you're never gonna get a get everyone's business. You're gonna get more no's than yeses, that's for sure. But um, that's all part of the process. How many people were you think you were talking to when you originally got started and your business started to boom ballpark? How many people were you talking to a day? Uh, our goal was 25 contacts a day. How'd you do at it? Some days I probably only did 10, and there were some days where I did 50 or 60. Um. You know, it, it probably averaged out to be right around there. So why is that so critical, Matt? I'm going to say today there will be two things that are extremely critical, what I've learned from you, what you've done. And the one thing would be the amount of times you put yourself out there and asked for the business was the contacts. What did you learn from being consistent on a basis of a weekly basis talking to people, contacts? What did that do for your business? It got me business. Uh, again, it's nothing where it was like, you know, it was very rare where it was a phone call I made that day that you know got me business within you know within a month. It was typically those phone calls I made, and then when I followed up with them, you know, I got business you know six, nine, twelve months down the road uh, from there. And the, the biggest thing, which still in this business, is is the follow up. You know, it's it's easy to make that initial contact. Sometimes people aren't ready to buy or sell right now. Um, you put them on the back burner, you forget about them. Guess what? They talked to another realtor at that point. To you know, in between that time, so the biggest thing always, constantly, is the follow up. You know, not losing track of your leads and trying to follow up with them. You know, uh, depending on how serious they are, every you know, two, three months. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. Ninety-eight percent of his business is follow up. You know, my yeah. buddy, you know, Jeff, he talks about it. Is this is a database business, and you got to follow up. If you don't follow up, guess what? There's another guy or girl down the street they'll use, right? No, absolutely, and I, and I, I, I still have, you know, I can, I can improve tremendously upon my follow-up. You know, if I did it 100%, I would probably do close to double the business I'm doing right now. You know, there's a, a it's, it happens. It's very natural. You know, there's going to be leads that fall through the cracks. Um, you know, you want to try to minimize that as much as possible, though. So you originally started 20, 25 contacts a day. Was your goal? Um, how are you doing today with contacts? What are you getting to doing these days? Uh, so it's definitely not up there. You know, there's days where we set aside where we do prospecting, and you know, I'll, I'll hit you know around 25 contacts. Um, you know, I pay, I get business a couple different ways now. Some of it's you know, I pay for online leads generating. So a lot of my contacts are more follow up now than uh, you know, just say cold call on Fizbo's or expireds or uh, touch and base to my sphere. A lot of it's is, is follow up. Would you say ballpark about 50 contacts a week, or where are you at right now, you think? Yeah, I'll say 10 contacts a day, yeah, that's about right. What would you like, are you happy with that, or is there, what, what, you, what could you change uh, on that? Yeah, there's, always, there's always room for improvement, you know. Um, I have a schedule that I try to stick to, but I can do a better job of sticking to my schedule. I can do, you know, there's, there's so many different areas I can in, improve upon, you know. 
it's like, hey, you know, you see about how much money you made at the end of the year, and you, you go back and you look at, you know, all the, the missed opportunities, and you're like, man, I could have, I could have made way more money, you know. So each year I'm trying to improve, and uh, you know, a big part of that is, you know, having a, uh, you know, someone who can hold you accountable, um, which is what you were really good at with me. You know, we uh, we held each other accountable. You know, we would shoot each other text messages at 5:30 in the morning to make sure we were up in time if you wanted to, you know, work out or whatever else. We'd come in, we would role play with each other. Um, and then we'd be like, all right, how many contacts do you want to hit? All right, I want to do this. Boom, and we would just go in our rooms and we would do it. When you don't have that uh, added accountability, it, it's a lot easier to, uh, you know, to kind of put your feet up and not work as hard. And was that was that about me or was that about you when we tried to hold each other accountable? Uh, it, was, it was about both of us. It was something that we were both looking for. I mean, you have pretty similar personalities, I think. Um, yeah. You know, and it's kind of, it can be easy for us to lose focus sometimes, right? <laughs> dead on, man, dead on. So uh, I have that extra accountability. Now I have, you know, different accountability within my team members. Um, but, you know, it's, uh, I think it's a, it's a huge part of the business, especially when you're, when you're new getting into the business. Um, you know, it's not like a typical job where you have a boss who cares that uh, you come in at 9 a.m. and you go home at 5 p.m. They don't care um, at all. So it's 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 very important to find that additional accountability wherever you can, whether it be other real estate agents in your office, if you're on a team, or if you have a, a manager who can hold you accountable, or pay for coaching. So one of the things you always did well, Matt, you were very coachable. You were very open to ideas. Why don't you give me an example of the day I told you to get rid of that crappy car with two different mirrors, and by lunchtime you came back with what? A BMW, baby. Right? Remember that day? <laughs> You said you bought a used BMW 5 Series, and you said someday I'll buy a new 5 Series. What do you drive now? Yeah, I got a 2013 528i. Yep. Pretty proud of you, man. It was by lunchtime. I went into Soroka's office. I said, holy crap. I said, this kid already bought a car. He goes, what do you mean? I said, here, yeah, he went to the dealership. He went up the street in Conshohocken and bought a BMW. He's already back with it. I said, did you, did you even test drive it? I forget. <laughs> I did, did test, test drive it. it. But I went on an appointment earlier that day. And uh, it was a, a half a million dollar property. It was an online lead, and the it was a fiance, the guy, the girl, and the parents. And they all had really nice cars. And my car got like the, you know, the side mirror uh, mirror knocked off earlier in the week. So I had like a black car with a gray mirror, and I pulled up, and I could just tell the look that they all gave me was like, I, we don't even, we don't care if this guy's the best real estate agent in the world. We're not going to give him our business. Like I, I, you know, I wasn't up to their level. I just didn't want to ever have that happen again, you know? Right. Not necessarily that I can wanted to deal with those people anyway, but I don't want to pull up and automatically be, be fighting uh, to get business, you know, just because of the car I pulled up in. Then you went down, I think, Salda Motors, then you in Concha Oh, yeah, yeah, right across the street, went down, and then uh, said, screw it. <laughs> went and bought a, bought, a, <laughs> bought a Beamer, man, I like it. So, so we talked a little bit about you getting into business earlier on, what you are. I have a question here from a person is, um, <clears throat> mindset-wise, how how were you so coachable? What, what, why why were you so open to things like this? What what was your mindset? Well, uh, going back to uh, you know when we were Mike Ferry coaching, one of the big things I was talking about is you know how everyone has like this ego, and no one cares about your ego. You got to put it aside, and you know it, it's you know I feel like it, my mindset is I I just naturally have a mindset where. I'm not doing. I'm not doing. An, I'm not working hard enough. I'm not doing a good of a job. So I'm always trying to get better. Just I guess maybe something that's a little ingrained to me. But I would say for people who aren't like that, you know, you got to put your ego aside. You got to be open. There's always somebody who's doing it better. Who's doing a better job. Um, who's doing it more efficient than you are. So you know, learn from those people. So routines and habits, right? Would you agree? I was just talking to some about this Saturday. This business comes down to two things. Routines and habits. You have the hard work. You mm -hmm. just needed to put the routines and habits in place to put you in the playing field to succeed. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, you got to build those habits. You know, just it's like anything else. Like you said, you know, it's like practice makes perfect. You know, any you know, talk about Michael Jordan. Talk about any sports athlete. You know, you know, LeBron, Kobe. They're putting in more time than anyone else. That's uh, any of the other players. You know, that are out there. They're they're working harder. So atmosphere-wise, let's talk about routines and habits, what you did. There's people out on this call right now that probably work at a firm where they're the only one doing this, right? They're the only one lead generating, or they're the only one feeling like they're on a, their own little island. 
How did that help you being on the same playing field with me, Mike, and other people doing the same thing you're doing? How did it help you? What do you mean? So, for example, if we were lead generating or if we were getting coached or if we were role playing and we were doing the same things that you were doing, there's mm -hmm. agents out there on this call right now, Matt, that do that, but they don't get the full benefit because they're not in an atmosphere that's allowing them to go to the next level because they do it on their own. How did it help you that other people were doing it? Yes, when you do it with, with a group of people, especially people who, who are doing it every day, I mean, you get to learn almost from you know every call. You can if you're in a room prospecting with other people, or if you're just in the same office, you know you're able to listen to the the objections. You know everyone's probably going through the same objections in the same market, so you get to hear what those objections are. You get to see how they handled it, and then you can apply that. You can tell if they did a good job or a bad job. You know you can have, you know there's probably you know, I could make a phone call and it could totally bomb, and my next phone call could be awesome. You know, and, and, which is the way it is. You know you, you can just when you're around other like-minded people doing the same thing, you're able to you're able to, to pull from each other, be able to generate. It just it's very synergistic and ends up working out typically for the best. Yeah, we got we're up to about ten boosts right now, man. We had six, I had another four. We got ten boosts. Not everybody does it, Matt. You know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, got ten, twelve people doing it, and you can see the different results. Like Scotty G, that you refer me, right? Scotty, Scotty's doing great with it, you know. And then, you know, I just gave him some Facebook tips. He did a Facebook post the other day. He's very coachable, like you. Mm -hmm. He got eight leads from a five dollar post that I taught him on Facebook, you know. Oh wow. How to do a boost post. But you know, people were working off each other and you know, whiners and complainers and troublemakers, they can work somewhere else. Life's too short, you know, you had a good oh, positive atmosphere. Absolutely, and it goes back to you know what you were the best at, Jeremy. Is, you know, is, is that accountability, is staying on top of people, and you know, I feel like in this business more than any, you need that extra accountability. Again, because you're typically your broker, they don't care if you show up or not. You know. <laughs> yeah. The other option is if you can't find it within an office, you can go hire it. But you know what that costs per year for coaching, right? Oh yeah. So I did. I was in Mike Ferry, which was a uh, thousand bucks a month. I was in Corcoran. Which was like a four thousand, five thousand dollars startup fee plus a thousand bucks a month. So uh, they're definitely expensive, uh, and the reason why people pay that um, is because of the accountability. You know, because these coaches are giving the accountability. So if you can find it somewhere else for cheaper or for uh, free, you know, you, you hold on to it, jump on that. That's 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 real value there. It's dollars being saved. So that twelve thousand dollars that they would spend a year, do you think it'd be easy to say if they could easily triple their income on that twelve grand? Yeah, if, you're that, yeah, if you're spending that money, you're making it worth your time, that's for sure. Yep. You got that dollar going out. Um, so we talked about a couple different things. The first thing we talked about, you being part-time, getting into the real estate. Um, we talked about some coaching requirements. If you are an agent out there, why don't you help them out, Matt? What would you be looking for in a company or a coach or you know, partner up with a manager? What would you be looking for if you were them that would take their business to the next level? Am I a newer agent or am I an experienced agent? I'd say you are either new or experienced and you're looking for a mentor or coach. What, 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 what would you be looking for? What would be the requirements? Uh, the main thing I would want is someone who's willing to, to, to keep me accountable, um, who's willing to make sure that you know when I show up for work that they're uh, providing me with you know tips to in increase my business, uh, holding me accountable to make sure I'm making calls if that's going to be a big part of my business. Um, you know, someone who actually cares about me, uh, you know, in increasing my business. There's a lot of, you know, brokers out there where, you know, I don't think it's typical for the manager to really, uh, you know, help you increase your business. They're kind of there to deal with any problems maybe that, that come up in a typical real estate office. But as far as, like, actually making sure each individual agent um, that wants help is giving help, I think that's huge, and, and I know that you do that. So... Let's uh, move over a little bit to uh, some other spinning plates for business. How are you doing on Facebook? Uh, Facebook, great. Um, I have uh, my business page and then my personal page, uh, because I, you know, I, I, I get a lot of my personal. I get a lot of sphere of influence business. I do get a lot of business just from my personal post, but I do have m my business page as well. You know, the other day I posted something about the interest rates when they dropped real low that one day. Yeah, that was um, a great post. Yeah, I got. I received you know ten messages in my uh, in my inbox. <laughs> And all was simple. I saw it, man. It was very easy. Just basically said, rates dropped. You know, give me a ring. 
And even on a refi, give me a ring because it still gives you an opportunity to talk to the person. I thought it was smart. Absolutely. They were all, I mean, the business that I received, they were all for refi business, but I just provided value to, you know, my clients out there. And, you know, they were thankful for that and they're going to, I'm going to be able to get business because of that. And a lot of people assume, Matt, they know that, but they don't know that the rates drop. They're not in the business like us. No, not at all. I, some guy, he had, he had a rate of like 6.2%. Um, he was able to refi down to 4 <laughs> So we talked about lead generation. We talked about how you get it networking, Facebook. Um, you know, you're at events. You're in front of your center of influence. I, you know, went to your wedding. You got a large center of influence. You know a lot of people, right? Mm -hmm. You get internet leads, right? Yeah. So I also, you know, you got, you know, spend money on on the Zillow and the Trulia. You know, we, you know, I have a system called Zerpo, which is similar to Boomtown. Um, yeah. Spend money to make money. Yeah. What percent do you think you're investing back in your business? Do you have a percentage off hand? Uh, no, I don't. No. So how's that been? What was so with investing back in your business? Have you always been like that, or has that changed over the years? How did you? Uh, you know, say after you know, after I, I went full time, um, you know, I saw how you guys did it, and you guys were investing in your business. And once I decided to go on my own, you know, I had to build up my my collateral a little bit before I could spend money, but once I was able to, I started doing it right away. Um, and then, fortunately enough, I got to the point where I received enough business where I needed to, I needed help. Um, so I was able to hire an assistant. And uh, it, you know, once you hire one, you're never going to go back to not having one. It's, it's so worth it. Um, and then I had an influx of leads coming in that I couldn't handle, so I was able to hire a buyer's agent. Um, took a buyer's agent who did two deals uh, on his own. And then he came on my team, and I'm doing like 23 deals. So question, you mentioned something which I think is another lead source that most people don't think of. It's called an assistant. So mm -hmm. if they can't afford an assistant, they should be sharing an assistant, or they should be hiring an assistant. How yeah. has the assistant role changed your game and your business, man? Mm -hmm. It's huge, you know. Like I, you know, the, where I, where my expertise lies, and where my specialty is, and what I'm good at is is, is meeting with people and getting them under contract, whether it's listing contracts, buyer contracts, whatever, getting stuff closing. You know, I, I, I can do all the paperwork, and I'm not going to let anything slip through the cracks, but it's not where I want to specialize my time into. So once I was able to, to get an assistant who was good at doing those things, you know, that just opened up more time for me to go out and try to get, you know, more business, more stuff under contract, more sales. So you realize what you're good at, and then you leverage everything else and make money off that person. Is that fair? Yeah, no, absolutely. You and I were talking before about what's that? It's also, I, you know, it feels good to be able to to hire somebody. You know, if someone you're providing for, they're helping them provide for their family. It's, uh, you know, that, I think that's it. It's, it's a huge uh, added benefit as well. You know, it feels good to do that. Yeah, it's a win-win, man. You feel like you're giving back, right? Yeah, absolutely. So you and I were talking before the call about doctors, right? You know, a lot of doctors, besides a general doctor, they specialize in one thing and then they leverage everything else, right? Mm hmm The big challenge I see in this game, man, is most people don't understand what they're good at and don't understand what they're not, and they don't hire people to do what they're not good at. Most doctors stink at paperwork, you know? Yeah, no, I think most people are just scared to scared to spend the money. Like you know, it's it's like well, well, no, I don't know where my next paycheck is coming from. Whatever. If you're a good real estate agent and you're full time, you're dedicated. You spend the money. You're you're going and it's going to be worth it. And you're going to make money. So you'll see people buy investment properties, Matt. You'll see them buy cars. But the last thing I see people invest in 401ks. They're getting six, eight, ten percent returns on their 401k, right? Mm-hmm. Soroka and I, our first year with our assistant, got a hundred percent return, probably two hundred percent return. Now I think about it, on what we invested in an assistant. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? There is no better place to put your dollars than an assistant. No, absolutely. It's uh, it's awesome. <laughs> how, uh, Matt? How big is it that you, when you get an assistant in place, that you use that extra time you have, like? Productively, and you're not just off on the golf course doing something. Yeah, yeah. well, at the end of the day, you know, you, you want to be doing income-producing activities. You know, you know. But another part of it is, is hey, you know, when you're working hard, and you know, most likely if you have assistant, you are working, you know, a ton of hours. You're doing good business, and it actually gives you an opportunity to, to now go out on a golf course if you wanted to for a couple hours. Um, 
and actually get to enjoy life a little bit. So it, it's it could work either way, but you know when you are working and the assistant's doing you know the paperwork and the other stuff, it gives you more time to do income producing activities, whether it's prospecting, you know, networking, uh, whatever, trying to get business. Excellent. And hey, I want to mention real quick, Jerry, is um, you know, for the people that are watching right now, there's a and A button. You can click at the top, and you can feel free to ask questions, and, and these guys will get them answered for you right away. Scott, I got one here from another person just asked you one. Is so, um, Matt. So we're talking about investing in assistance, right? Investing money in yourself and in your business, right? Uh huh. What would be a reason why a person shouldn't get an assistant or leverage in that or hire an assistant? Why they shouldn't? Yeah. Uh, if if you don't have the business there to support it, uh, obviously you know you got to be doing a, a decent amount of business in order to uh, to pay for an assistant. Um, some people's financial you know it, it is different than others, you know. And I would say if that's the case, join a team that has one already set up where you can you know still make the money. You don't have to. You're not coming out of pocket to pay for the online leads. You're not coming out of pocket to pay for your assistant. Um, you know, there's there's different ways to go about it where you don't have to directly pay for that yourself. Or share an assistant, right? You can share an assistant, absolutely. That's what we're working on here is training uh, assistants, Matt, and then having them share them and take baby steps so they don't have to go right up and you know, drop thirty, forty thousand on an assistant right up front, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So we talked about routines and habits, man. Routines and habits. Um, what was that little piece of paper that you shared with me before the call on some routines and habits and goals that you worked on? All right, back so this, in the day? this was from two thousand and ten. Yeah. And this was a little what I had hanging up uh, on my above my computer every day. These were like at some point in time, ten things that I wanted to make sure got done every week. Why is it? Why was it hanging up above your computer on your wall? So I would see it every day, uh, and then it's in front of me, so it's always you know you're always thinking about it. So okay, I want to make sure I read this book. I want to make sure that I you know it's not all even real estate related. It was working out a couple times a week, setting appointments, getting up at a certain time. Cleaning my desk at the end of each day, which is something I need to do. <laughs> yeah. Getting 25 contacts a day, you know, script practicing four times a week, calling my nana once a week. <laughs> I love it. It's all there. You know, it's about personal and business. And how did that help you? What did that do for you by having your goals in front of you, man? It's a way better chance of actually accomplishing your goals uh, when it has it. Now, you know. Not every week did I do all these things, but I had a way better shot of hitting those goals because it was in front of me every day and I was, you know, trying to do it. And I had it right there in front of me telling me this is what I need to do. I give you kudos for doing that, brother. There, here's a trivia question. What percent of Americans in the United States right now have written goals? What percentage? Mm, one. Less than 10 percent, dude. One percent is less than 10 percent. Yeah, le one is less than 10. I do like it, dude. That is dead. It's right there in the range. It's pretty, you know, it's pretty amazing. You know, if you don't have those goals, how can you know what you're working towards? You know. Right now, absolutely. What routines and habits matter? Are you working on in 2014? What do you need to improve? You know, 20 million dollar range, man. What what routines and habits do you need to work on? Uh, everything. Um, from following a uh, schedule better to making sure I'm prospecting more to you know make sure I'm I'm, I'm making more contacts, networking. Uh, to making sure I'm closing more deals, uh, you know, every single aspect of my business uh, can has a, a lot of room for improvement. What did you do well in 2014, man? To share with people, what did you do well? 2014 was a uh, it was a tough it was a, a tough year, you know, in my personal life. Just I had a lot going on. Like you know, I had my first baby was born at the end of the winter. We had a terrible winter, obviously, as you know. The baby yeah. was born at the end of the winter, so it was my it's a newborn baby coming into the spring market. Um, bought the big house with my wife. We settled in August. I had my buyer's agent leave me in the middle of the year, the middle of the summer, which was tough. So I had, a lot of things happened. Uh, I was still able to, you know, get close to my goal, which is good. Um, but my goal is this year is to, you know, kind of set everything in place where, you know, even when that stuff pops up, where I'm still able to persevere and, you know, still hit my goals. And the way I would have to do that is is by is enlarging my team, getting my team bigger, getting more experienced good agents on my team. How's your mindset, man? How, how's your mindset right now going into 2015? Uh, every year is going to be better than my previous year. Um, my mindset is is always going to be that. i got to do better than the previous year. Um, you know, I, I, I know that I always have a lot of room for improvement, and I'm always going to just try to strive to get better. 
How do you always stay so positive, man? You're always upbeat. Do you feel upbeat inside, or is that something you play? No, I mean, uh, I, I think a lot of it is, you know, in, in my head, I don't feel like I'm doing as good of a job, so I need to overcome that. So maybe it's just my, uh, my personality, I guess. Your personality, but your mindset, is it strong like that, or you just you just have a positive outlook on everything? It's always going to work out on the most positive side. Yeah, you know, I, I think by uh, by nature, I just have a I do have a pretty positive outlook that things are going to work out. You know, everything I you know, whenever I was scared to you know say spend money on something or do something, you know, and I end up doing it, it always end up working out in the in, in the positive favor. Even you know buying the we you know we bought a house this year and I wasn't really ready to do it for another year, but uh, you know, the opportunity presented itself and we were jumped on it and I don't regret it at all now. Yeah, take risks in life, man. Right? Absolutely, man. You gotta, you know, it's, especially this business. It's a, it's a risky business. Life, you know, you gotta. You're not gonna have high rewards if you don't take high risks. So, in summary, we talked about a lot of things, Matt. So, number one, we talked about lead generation, right? Mm-hmm. You talked about how originally you were very stringent on that, and now as you've got more experience, you have to make as many contacts, but you're still talking about 50 people a week, right? Yep. I'm trying to get I'm trying to get the guys in the office and girls in the office, you know, the ones that want to lead generate and do it. They'll do a hundred. Most are doing fifty, seventy five. I give them kudos, man, they're doing a good job. And other people don't want to do it. We give them a buffet, they can do what they want, you know what I mean? And they're doing well with it. I'm pretty impressed with what they're doing with it. And you did a great job with it, man. I want to give you some props for that on the lead generation schedule. I appreciate it. Again, you know, at the end of the day, even if you just show up to the office and you're there from 8 to 5, 9 to 5, whatever, you're going to get business. So wh here's the thing I see with people with hours. How, how, how are you able to get to work early? Was that a mindset thing, or did you always just get up early? I always got up early before. Now it's tough for me to get in early because I have to take uh, my son to daycare. So, uh, you know, I'm in, my wife gets into work. She's in work by 6 a.m. So you know, I have to get up, change them, shower, do all that stuff. So it's been a little tougher, but I've still been able to get into work, you know, right around 9 a.m. Some days it's at 8 a.m. Some days it's not until close to 10. But uh, <coughs> for the most part, it's uh, right around 9 a.m. It's just it's tougher because you're waking up and you're just constantly doing, you know, changing the baby, getting it dressed, all that, yeah, you know, all that yeah. fun stuff. <laughs> and then you know, scheduling obviously now easier than before, but now it's a little bit more challenging. But you realizing being a parent now how important it is to schedule and plan everything out because you don't have the luxury of not doing that because you got the little one now you know oh yeah no I, I live and die by my calendar you know it's uh, if you don't schedule everything you're just gonna be you end up screwing yourself I feel like <laughs> yep it just catches you in the back end you know later down down the road it just catches up with you yeah how about skill how about skills dude you said you worked on role playing and you worked on scripts mm-hmm uh, how beneficial was that with you now in your business? It's very beneficial because it, you know, it's uh, it becomes a lot more of a natural conversation for you when you already had that conversation multiple times when you're practicing that conversation. So you're not necessarily just pulling stuff from the back of your head. You, you know, you already have it's like second nature. Um, so you just pull those scripts. You you know what the objection is. You hear the objection, and then boom, objection handler pops in your head and it just comes out very natural. It took you know, some time to practice it, right? I'm sure you're not doing it that much these days, but back in the day, you had to do that to get started, build that foundation, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. We did it every day. And then you got mindset. Obviously, you got a positive mindset, right? Mm -hmm, absolutely. You got to have a positive mindset. It's so easy to uh, to get negative, um, especially you know, there's going to be deals that fall apart. You're going to have clients, uh, you know, who love you and think you're the best realtor ever. You have clients who don't like you, um, and you know, it, and they're going to, you know. Let you know that, and if, when they tell you that you can't be down here, you know, when when someone's saying you're not doing good, and all the way up here when someone's saying you're you're the best realtor in the world, you got to try to remain an even keel, be positive, and uh, keep moving forward. Moderation, man. If you can keep it moderation, you got a chance to succeed. How about lastly, number five is atmosphere. You know, you talked about how critical atmosphere is. To surround yourself with the right people. Um, you know, and. What we're trying to do right now, Matt, is you know get people to lead, generate, and group together. The ones that want to do it, great. The ones that don't, it's totally fine too. Door knocking and you know try to do things in groups. You have a lot better chance of succeeding. Over the years, have you been more of a group guy or an individual guy? Um, 
you know, kind of maybe right right around even. You know, I don't. Huh. Yeah, we build stuff with the group, you know, because you get to, you know, you get that uh, the atmosphere that you build, that, that that you strive for. Everyone's, you know, in it in it together. So, you know, it, you're going to see a lot of again, you're going to get you're going to see people get turned down for asking for business. People are going to say no, and it, it doesn't affect you as much when you got other people there. and The same things happening to them. So we pretty much summarized that I got another question from another agent here. 2015. What do you see some challenges in the 2015 market? Do you see anything, or what do you think, man? No, I, I think it's going. I mean, <clears throat> I think it's going to be better than 2014. Um, <clears throat> I think you know we're finally kind of see the market starting to normalize, and this is what a normal market is. You know, depending upon how the winter is, I expect 2015 markets to be there to be appreciation, and uh, you know the interest rates are probably going to pop up, which would actually help us a little bit, but nothing crazy where they're going to be in the you know 5.5 percent above. Over the holidays, are you going to take a lot of time off, or are you going to, you know, get down and get some referrals from people and, you know, talk? What, what, what's your business like in the in the winter time? What do you try to do? Uh, I, you know, I actually give, I, for whatever reason, I, I do pretty well in the winter time. You know, I treat treat it the same as I do for uh, the rest of the year. You know, uh, at the end of the year, you always try to game plan. Look at what you did well, what you didn't do well, but you know you're still showing up to the office every day. I'm going to be prospecting and trying to get business for 2015. You know that's really how you set up your your spring market is uh is by putting the time and enjoying the winter. Two things. It's typically people are not doing it, so when you talk to them, you have a better shot of getting the business. And the second thing is overall. Most people are more happy during the holidays. It's the best time of year to get referrals, you know. They're more happy. It's easier to get a. It's it's easier to get a, a hold of people too during the holidays because a lot of people have off for a week or two weeks in between, you know, before Christmas or between Thanksgiving and Christmas, Christmas and the New Year. And they actually have some time to think about you to give you some referrals too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Catch them so many times when they're busy and they can't. So uh, just want to thank you, man. I really do. I'm impressed with what you've done over the years. Uh, I've learned a lot from what you've done. Uh, you're always straightforward and honest. You're very coachable. You're hardworking. And I believe, Matt, this is just the beginning for you. Um, keep on being open and coachable, man. You've got two ways to do this business. You can innovate it or you can follow it. And you've done a very, very good job, man, of uh, running a very, very productive uh, business. I just want to you know, tell you congrats, man. I'm proud of you. Well, thank you very much, Jeremy. A lot of that has to do with, uh, you know, obviously starting off with uh, with you and Mike and kind of just following what you guys did. So, thank you, sir. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, with you, Matt, how if someone wants to get in touch with you and talk to you, what's an email? What's a phone number? Uh, so my cell phone is 215-284-5725. 215-284-5725. And the email is donnellyregroup at gmail.com. I'd like to also thank Scott today. Scott's group is one helping us do his Google Hangouts. They're very important to Matt's business, my business, a lot of people's business out there with teaching us follow-up systems for viral marketing, get viral, and they will help you cultivate your center of influence business. And guys like Matt and myself have a decent-sized center of influence. It's helped us branch out our center of influence business we just want to thank you for your time, too, man. I know you're busy. We appreciate it. No problem, man. I love being here listening to you guys. I'm always learning, so I, I appreciate you you having me on and allow me to participate. Um, and, and, yeah, it's good stuff. Everybody have a great week. We appreciate it. We'll catch you next month.